So, you have a movie for me? I am a collector! Australian Legends! This is... And go! What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI and it's Spider Week! Spider Week! That's why I ain't getting no sleep. I can't get no sleep. Because a lot of Spider-Man stuff to get through. Uh, I'm going to see Homecoming. Uh, not Homecoming. <laughs> Already seeing Homecoming. I'm going to go see um, No Way Home tomorrow. Uh, I could go to a midnight screening in a few hours. But uh, I mean, just, I might just live a normal human being life as well. I mean, I would like to. I'm almost not a normal human being, but... This time I uh, won't go to the midnight screening, but this is going to be a lot of fun to celebrate the uh, No Way Home the movie that's coming out. I'm going to react to all three of the Tobey Maguire pitch meetings in a row for the Spider-Man series. This is going to be great. I just watched this uh, this trilogy recently with, uh, with my partner. She'd never seen them. And uh, it, in some cases it held up. In other cases, it certainly did not hold up. So let's start with the Spider-Man 2002 pitch meeting, but before we do, let's have a look at a very special Spider-Man Origins Aussie pitch meeting. A splatter when battle and adolescence and adolescent with essence and a hesitance impress him with it. So, have you got a new superhero for me? Yes sir, I do. It's called Spider-Man. A guy named Peter Parker gets bitten by a radioactive spider and gets like, spider abilities and some other shit. Radioactive spider? Is that like a funnel web? Redback? Bird-eating spider? Trapdoor? White tail? Don't tell me it's like a huntsman. Huntsmen aren't even dangerous. Yeah, I know, but they're fucking massive. No, no, no. This is going to be set in New York, so it's just going to be a cute little New York spider. Aww, American spiders are adorable. Have you thought about making this Spider-Man Aussie and using some of our deadly arachnids for inspiration? I mean, we've already got Doctor Doom, Galactus, Kang, Thanos. I don't think there's room for another super being like that in the Marvel Comics world. Come on, Aussie Spider-Man and he's got like Aussie spider powers. I think that writes itself. But let's check out the Spider-Man pitch meeting for, uh, yeah, the first movie. Oh, you have a Spider-Man movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And it's gonna be all about Spider-Man. Oh, that sounds perfect. I thought you might like that. So what happens in the movie? Well, it starts with Peter Parker as a nerd in high school, and this is one of those cool high schools where everybody's 30 years old. Those are the best <laughs> kind. And one day they go on a class trip to look at science. Okay, just quickly, um, we had an American exchange teacher come to our school for a little while when I was in high school, and we were allowed to ask her questions about America, basically, because I know we're obsessed with the place. And one person said, um, how old do you graduate? Um, how old are you when you graduate high school in America? And she's like, well, it's basically the same age here, you know, like 17 years old. And the, the girl's like, well, how come all the high school kids in American TV shows have like tattoos and beards and <laughs> drive cars and have own their own houses and shit? <laughs> I'll never forget that stuff, right? And there are a bunch of radioactive spiders there, but one of them is missing. That can't be good. Yeah, and so Peter's gonna get bit by it, this big red and blue one. Oh my god, what does everybody say? Oh, well, he doesn't tell anyone, he keeps it to himself. He gets bitten by an obviously radioactive <laughs> spider and doesn't ask if he should seek medical attention. That's right. Oh, very irresponsible. And then he's gonna go home and feel real sick. So he's gonna ask for help then, right? No, he's gonna go to his room, close the door, pass out, and wake up with superpowers. Oh, that's amazing, and it's actually a really good message for kids. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, if you ever feel so sick that you might pass out, lock yourself in your room alone and maybe you'll wake up with superpowers. That's a very good point, sir. So what powers does he develop? Oh, he gets this really cool occasional spider sense. Occasional spider sense? Yeah, well, sometimes in the script I have it not be a thing so he can get surprised by stuff. Uh, extremely... Yeah. Spider sense is an easy one to put into a script and then it'd be completely contradicted by certain parts of the plot. Unreliable superpowers. Yeah, and his main power is the ability to shoot webs. But he makes the web shooters himself, like in the comics, right? No, we're gonna have them be organic because of the spider bite. So the web fluid comes from inside him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that fluid stored inside his body? Oh, you don't want to know. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, I was just checking to see if I developed Jedi mind powers. It's stored in his balls. Oh, the balls. Okay, I got you. <laughs> anyway, so obviously Peter wants to keep his powers. Hey, for the record, I'm fully in support of organic webs. I don't like the fact that Peter Parker is 
uh, a genius who can create these one of a once in a world kind of like you know web fluid or whatever and he also happens to also get bitten by a spider as well like yeah it's just a bit too convenient for me so i'm all about the organic webs there's a secret right of course so one of the first things he does is a triple backflip in front of all the other 30 year olds at school very discreet <laughs> and he's also gonna make himself a crappy costume yeah well i guess a high school kid wouldn't have any costume design skills right but after uncle ben dies he's gonna get really good at it out of nowhere and make this amazing looking spider suit oh well people grieve in different ways you know lots of people cry and lots of other people become very skilled at making costume that is very common so who's the bad guy in this thing oh it's this guy norman osborne and he's gonna turn into the green goblin sounds scary yeah he has these bombs that turn people into skeletons oh man it's gonna be tough for spider-man to win when the bad guy has those actually it's gonna be super easy <laughs> barely an inconvenience oh really yeah see green goblin's use never gonna ones. use those again so it's not even gonna be an issue oh wow that does make things a whole lot easier it sure does yeah, yeah. so anyway green mm. goblin's gonna ask spider-man if he wants to team up with him and be evil together oh and if spider-man says no he's gonna kill him yeah but he's gonna be really cool about it he's gonna be like you know what take your time think about it and if you want to be evil together hit me up very considerate yeah and later he's gonna hide in a fire and surprise spider-man like hey did you think about my offer oh uh, surprising people at fires is tight that's where i had my grandma's 70th birthday in a fire yeah she was so surprised she kept on screaming and screaming probably because of the fire maybe but mostly the surprise i think so what else happens in the movie well peter's <laughs> in love with this girl mj but she's dating his friend harry osborne <laughs> Oh, bummer. Yeah, but he's gonna save her as Spider-Man and they're gonna share this romantic upside-down kiss. Mm. Infidelity doesn't count if it's upside down. Exactly, so she's still a good person. Okay. Fantastic. Although she does also <laughs> kiss him at Harry's dad's funeral. Oh, well, kissing at funerals is super romantic, so that's still cool. Right, good point. But I guess he doesn't say anything to her as Spider-Man so she doesn't recognize his voice, right? Actually, not only is he gonna speak to her, but he's gonna repeat the same thing he said to her as Peter Parker 30 seconds earlier about being in the neighborhood. And she doesn't recognize him? She's not the brightest, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> anyway, so later Green Goblin is gonna dangle a tram car full of kids on one side of a bridge and MJ on the other. So this happens during the day? No, it happens at night. Why were there a bunch of kids in a tram car at night? They were on one of those nighttime field trips, I guess. Oh, well that's not a real thing. Whoops. Whoopsie, so who does Peter choose to save? He chooses both. Was that an option? Yes. Well, okay then. So then there's gonna be a big final fight and Green Goblin's gonna accidentally kill himself. Wow. And so yeah, what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun and I have the perfect guy in mind to play Peter Parker. Oh yeah? Yeah, this guy Toby Maguire, he's gonna be the definitive Spider-Man. Nobody's ever gonna be able to replace him. Amazing. Uh... <laughs> um, Toby Maguire as Spider-Man. I don't know. I did I didn't like it as much when I watched it more recently, and I thought I would still kind of dig that, but yeah, he, he was a little bit too sappy for me. Like, he, he wasn't shy. He was just very kind of like, oh, like, I don't know. He just seemed a little bit kind of glum. I really think Tom Holland is the quintessential Spider-Man. I think he got the Marvel Cinematic Universe got everything right with that character and building him up and everything like that. But let's check out the pitch meeting for Spider-Man 2. Uh, which one was this? This is the one with like uh, Sandman. Is it? A, I'm pretty sure. No, he's in the third one. This is with um, Harry... Doc, Doc Ock is in number two, of course. All right, so this was Doc Ock and Harry Osborn were basically the uh, the villains. Uh, I remember people raving about this one. I didn't really think it was that much of a standout of the series or anything like that. It was okay. It was fun. Uh, it certainly wasn't like number three, but let's uh, let's have a watch of this. This might jog my memory of the things to remember about Spider-Man 2. Do you have a Spider-Man sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. So at the beginning of this movie, we're going to have this whole big thing where Peter's having a bunch of time management and money problems. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's trying to balance being Spider-Man, being a student, paying his rent, being a photographer, and being a pizza delivery guy. He's a pizza delivery guy now? <laughs> yeah, but he's going to lose his job if he doesn't deliver a bunch of emergency pizzas in like seven minutes. If he's having such big money problems, why doesn't he try to cash in on the Spider-Man thing a little, you know, do an event or a public appearance or something? Yeah, there are probably lots of ways he could use his Spider-Man powers to make money, but it would be totally unethical to do that, you know? Doesn't he sell Spider-Man selfies to a newspaper for cash? Well, yeah, but other than that, you know, completely unethical to make money using Spider-Man powers. So yeah. how does he deliver the emergency pizzas? Using his Spider-Man powers. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Aunt May is also having 
<laughs> money problems and Peter's worried about her because she's all alone and she can't pay for the house. So he moves <laughs> back in with her and they pool their money together and all their problems are solved? Well, no, because Spider-Man has to be downtown to do Spider-Man stuff. Living with Aunt May didn't stop him from being Spider-Man in the first movie. Well, it would stop him now for some reason. Well, okay then. Yeah, so what point. else happens in the movie? Oh, well, at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna have Peter choose to not confess his love to MJ because of his responsibilities as Spider-Man, even though she's clearly into him. Oh, isn't that literally how the first movie ended? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it again, almost immediately. <laughs> well, okay then. And then later, this guy, Otto Octavius, is gonna be like, Peter, you know the way to a girl's heart is through poetry, and so Peter starts to study poetry. Why? To win over Mary Jane. But you said she's clearly into him and he turned her down. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Anyway, so this Otto Octavius guy is actually pretty Wow, important. yeah. I, so I don't really pay attention to the love stories. Like, I, I don't know, I've never really been into, like, love stories in any kind of movie sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, that's a good point. There's a lot of just inconsistencies about why he's go why he's doing what. Oh, and what's his deal? Well, he's creating this mini sun reactor thing that could provide sustainable energy for the whole planet. So he has a whole crowd gathered at his place to watch him turn it on for the first time. Seems like the kind of thing you do behind closed doors for the first time. <laughs> yeah, for sure, but instead he's gonna do it in a Manhattan skyscraper <laughs> with a bunch of unguarded people watching. <laughs> Interesting choice. And so as part... <laughs> It's literally like one of the most populated places on the planet. And this is where he's going to run this test for a, a global energy solution. Wow. Part of the project, he's made these crazy robot arms that he controls with his brain. Yeah. And they have a little glass inhibitor chip so they don't take over his mind. Wow, well that's a world-changing invention right there. People watching must be freaking out. They literally have no reaction to it. <laughs> um, anyway, so the machine doesn't work and Otto's wife dies and the inhibitor chip gets destroyed. So the robot arms take control of his mind? They do. Uh, this is gonna be some awesome Terminator stuff. What does the evil AI want to do? It wants to rebuild a machine and create sustainable energy energy for all mankind. Oh, that's actually pretty noble. But like in an evil way. Oh, okay. So then Doc Ock realizes he needs money to buy the parts to rebuild the machine, so he decides to steal some. If he's okay with stealing, why doesn't he just go steal the stuff? Why go through the extra step of stealing money and making transactions? I don't know. Fair enough. So then later, Peter and Aunt May are at the bank, right? And out of all the banks in New York City, Doc Ock happens to rob that very same one at that very same time. Wow, what, what are the odds of that? Yeah. Astronaut. Astronomical. Oh, astronomy <laughs> is tight. I know, that's why I put it in there. Uh, Amazing. I feel like there's so much in the Spider-Man stories where the odds are astronomical. He's so connected to like every single one of his villains. But anyway. Let's get back to it. Amazing. So then Spider-Man and Doc Ock are gonna have this big fight and exchange punches and kicks back and forth. So I guess yeah. Doc Ock's metal arms block all the punches? No, Spider-Man lands a whole bunch of punches and kicks. But Spider-Man has super strength and Doc Ock is just a guy with robot arms. Wouldn't a single punch knock him out Kill or him, incapacitate yeah. him? You'd think so, but apparently the guy can take a hit. Impressive. So then Aunt May <laughs> saves the day by hitting him with an umbrella. Oh, she does. Yeah, gets him real good. Wow. So later Doc Ock needs some tritium to build the machine, so he goes to see Harry Osborn, who's the one who gave him some earlier. Oh, so Harry gives it to him? No, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some if you bring me Spider-Man alive. Why would he agree to a deal, though? He came to threaten Harry. This isn't a negotiation. Well, he's gonna agree, because Spider-Man has to be involved in the movie somehow. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Spider-Man does have to be involved. So then Harry tells Doc Ock, Peter Parker yeah, can tell true. you where Spider-Man is. How come? Because he takes Spider-Man's picture sometimes, and that means they're super close. That is how photography works. So then Doc Ock tracks down Peter in a coffee shop with MJ. How does he find him? Unclear. Fair enough. And what does he do? <laughs> well, how did I get your attention when I walked in here? You threw a printer at the back of my head. Exactly. <laughs> Throwing a heavy object at someone's head is the best way to let them know you want to talk. So what does Doc Ock throw? Well, he has super strong robot arms, so he throws a car. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, if Peter didn't have his spidey sense, he'd be dead for sure. Doc Ock got super lucky that Peter Parker is secretly a superhero. Definitely. So then Peter stops a train oh, with the power. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Yes, no shit. He he would have just killed him right there. He's like, bring me alive. All right, here comes a car. Whoosh. Like, fuck it up. Talk about overkill. Uh, why did I pause it on this face? Or of constipation and Doc Ock <laughs> kidnaps MJ and brings Spider-Man to Harry. Oh, so what happens next? Well, Harry takes off Spider-Man's mask and he's like, Peter, you killed my dad in the first movie. So Peter's like, I didn't kill your dad. He tried to kill me and accidentally killed himself. No, he's like, Harry, there are bigger things happening here than me and you. Feels like that other sentence could have cleared everything up though. Well, there's no time yeah. to say that one sentence. So he says the other one sentence instead. I guess that makes 
makes sense. So then Peter's like, <laughs> Harry, you need to tell me where Doc Ock brought MJ. Does Harry even know that? No, he'd have no way of knowing, but somehow he tells him anyway. Wow. And then after a little fight, the mini sun gets too powerful and they have to find a way to destroy it. Oh, is that going to be hard to do? No, it's going to be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Octavius is like, I'm going to dump it in the river and then that immediately works. And what happens with Harry? Well, he's going to go crazy and find his dad's old goblin stuff. Oh, what does he do with it? Well, we'll find out in the next movie. Whoa, whoa, hold on. We need to see if this one does well first. Maybe the success of the first one was a fluke. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, but if it does do well, we're going to cram yeah. Spider-Man down people's throats for years. Oh, oh fingers yeah. crossed. <clears throat> 18 projects in development. Holy shit. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. When was this? This was... Uh... Uh, that's in 2018 though yeah I, we've probably had a big chunk of those already but man what a uh, interesting take on that movie that was very very true there was so much stuff in that movie that really just didn't make sense and when i watch movies i don't try and find plot holes just for the purpose of poking you know holes and stuff but when you look back on some of these things and you're like yeah i mean what was the one i watched the other day uh, the the wolverine and they realized that all of the you know story that happened back in the war with wolverine and the japanese guy when they were young and he shouldn't remember any of that and he just inexplicably does so happens all over the place but that was a fun pitch meeting i uh, really like the doc Ock character i cannot wait to see him back in um no way home but let's cap it off with spider-man 3 pitch meeting holy shit this is a, the one that people are going to be skipping to i'm sure I, i've put chapters down there so Give a thumbs up if you use the chapter feature and you appreciate it. Um, Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire, Ray for, no, Ray for Alston. Jesus Christ, that's a, not the guy. Toe for Grace. <laughs> oh, Ray for Alston. <laughs> Orlando Magic point guard for like the 2009 finals. Um, Spider-Man 3, Toe for Grace as Venom was <clears throat> poorly planned and poorly executed and poorly devised and poorly casted it was there was really not much to say about the eddie brock character he just did nothing for anyone and that character was so anticipated i remember when this movie came out <clears throat> people were like venom's gonna be in the movie venom's gonna be in the movie i remember the um rumor was that Dwayne the rock johnson was gonna be playing venom in this movie i remember that room and i was like fuck yeah that's gonna be sick instead we got eric foreman who you know Fresh to the studio after getting a foot in the ass from Old Red. But um, yeah, and there's a lot more to say about this movie that was pretty average. But let's check out the Spider-Man 3 pitch meeting. Thank you if you've made it this far and you've watched through the other videos. Let's check it out. So you have Hit a like. Spider-Man sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. So for this one, I really <clears> wanted <throat> to go all in on what people really loved about the first two movies. Oh yeah, a bunch of cool Spider-Man action? No, a bunch of relationship problems between Peter and MJ. Is that what people liked about the first two movies? Well, I certainly hope so, because we're going to have a ton of nope. crying and whining from both of them. Them. Wow, yeah. fingers crossed. I also noticed that there weren't a lot of music or dance numbers in the first two movies, so I went ahead and jammed like four or five of them into this one to compensate. <laughs> I guess it'll be fun to have some good musical numbers in there. Oh no, they're gonna be really bad. Oh, they are. <laughs> yeah, one of the story threads is actually about how bad the first musical performance was. Like, MJ's gonna get fired from her Broadway play, she was so bad. So we're jamming a bunch mm. of bad music and dance numbers in there? Exactly. Interesting strategy. I'm sure people won't see it coming. Probably not. So one of the <laughs> Things that people definitely liked in the first two movies were the villains. So tell me about the villain in this one. What's his deal? Which one? Oh, you have two villains? I have three villains. Oh, laying it on real thick. Okay, tell me about the three villains. Well, we're gonna have this guy Flint Marco turn into the Sandman. Okay, okay, and what's his deal? Well, he has a sick daughter, so anytime he does something bad, it's not his fault. That's true. If you have a sick family member, you're not responsible for any of your actions. <laughs> exactly. Like last week, I heard my niece cough, so I went outside and stole a car. Not your fault. I know. <laughs> That's what I explained to the screaming people inside the car. So how does he turn into the Sandman? Well, he escaped from prison, so as he's running from the cops, he falls inside a big science hole. Those things are all over the place. <laughs> I know, and at this one, a bunch of scientists are doing tests on some science sand hole. at 2 a.m. and not following up on the results. Wow. So yeah, he completely turns to sand, but this little locket that his daughter gave him doesn't, so he has something to look at all sad-like. Oh, she gave him a locket? Yeah, apparently <clears throat> she realized that
that having a locket with a picture of herself was a little weird, so she gave it to her dad. That is a weird thing to carry around. Anyway, so to push <laughs> things further with Sandman, later Peter and Aunt May are gonna get called to the police station. What for? Well, the police are gonna be like, guess what? It was actually the Sandman who killed Uncle Ben, but we didn't tell you because we didn't want to upset you. So why are they telling him now? <laughs> because they want to upset them now, I guess. <laughs> oh, suddenly deciding to upset people is tight. <laughs> yeah, and this way we can rewrite Uncle Ben's death to kind of shoehorn the Sandman in there. Why would we do that, though? It doesn't add anything. So Peter can have a deep personal connection with the villain. Is that really necessary for yes. every single villain? Yes, oh. always, forever. Well, okay, then. We're also gonna have the Venom symbiote in this movie. Oh, people love Venom. They sure do, sir, and he's gonna be in the movie for about five minutes. That's more than enough Venom, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we need to leave room for all the musical numbers. Very true. <laughs> so what's the backstory of the Venom symbiote? Man. It's gonna fall from space on a meteorite and land right next to Peter in Central Park. So what does Peter do? Well, he doesn't notice because he's in a web hammock kissing MJ. What about his spider sense? Oh, yeah, I forgot that was a thing, so it's not gonna be a thing in this movie. Fair enough. Yeah, he's just gonna get blindsided left and right. He's not gonna see anything coming. That's okay. <laughs> as long as we don't really bring up Spidey sense, I don't think people are gonna notice. Oh, well, Venom does have a line later where he's groping MJ and he's like, my Spidey sense is tingling, if you know what I mean. Oh, well, we can't cut that. That's a fantastic line. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> so anyway, this symbiote is gonna turn Peter's suit black and make him kind of a jerk, but really cool. Oh, so he's like into jazz? I said he's cool. Of course he's into jazz. <laughs> Just making sure. He also does a lot of finger guns and pelvic thrusts and dances in public to no music. Oh, none of that is gonna be physically painful to watch. Not in the least. He even says cool stuff like, now dig on this. Very cool. So anyway, eventually Peter's gonna get yeah. rid of the symbiote and it's gonna... So I did see something that was talking about like, the whole point of that is that that's Peter's you know, uh, manifestation of what cool is. And it's dreadful. But I don't buy that completely because there are certain scenes where like the people on the street are like, oh my God, look at this guy. He's so cool. Like that's where it was kind of like, oh yeah, I don't know about this guy. Latch on to Eddie Brock. Oh, <laughs> tell me about Eddie Brock. Well, he and Peter are fighting for the same photography job, right? Okay. And Peter discovers that Eddie faked a picture of Spider-Man. Unbelievable. So Eddie's like, come on, man, give me a break. Don't tell anyone. And Peter's like, you want forgiveness? Get religion. Oh, but he didn't ask for forgiveness. He asked for a break. Right, but there's going to be <laughs> is seen in a church later, so it's like foreshadowing. Doesn't really make sense for him to say that though. It's a nod to something later. Yeah, but I mean, I'm a good writer. Oh, well, okay then. So what happens at the church? Well, Eddie goes there to be like, hey God, could you please kill Peter Parker? That is how church works. And as it turns out, at the very same time in the very same church, Peter's in the bell tower tearing off his symbiote suit. Wow, what a wacky coincidence. Yeah, so Eddie Brock's gonna be like Parker, and then some symbiote's gonna fall on him. And he's gonna turn into Venom. And he's gonna turn into Venom. And all all he yeah. wants to do now is kill Peter Parker himself. So he climbs up to the top of the bell tower. Oh, well, no, I just had him do a scary thing where he jumps at the camera. But isn't Peter just lying there naked at the top of the bell tower? I guess he must have woken up and swung home naked. I don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> and then the other villain is Harry Osborn, and he's like the new Green Goblin. And why is he a villain? Well, he thinks that Peter killed his dad, so he wants to kill yeah. Peter. Oh, true. But towards the end of the movie, his butler's <clears throat> gonna be like, yo, your dad killed himself. I cleaned his wounds. I should know. Why did he wait so long to tell him? I don't know. Yes. That works for me. So then it's gonna be this big final fight of Harry and Peter versus Sandman and Venom. What are they fighting over? What do you think? Mary Jane got kidnapped? Mary Jane got kidnapped. I love that we always do that. It's just as exciting each time. Man, so it must have been tough to juggle all these villains in the same script. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, Go really? On. Yeah, throughout the script, I just had things happen to them that made them take little breaks from the movie. What do you mean? Well, like Harry bumps his head and forgets everything thing for a while. <laughs> oh, amnesia is always a great storytelling device. And then Sandman gets flushed down a sewer for a bit. Wow, and what about Venom? Oh, well, I just make the symbiote hang out in Peter's apartment doing nothing until I want it in the movie. It just hangs out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just hitches a ride on Peter's scooter from Central Park and chills out. That's a very patient symbiote. So what do you think? <laughs> do you think all these story threads are gonna work? I think it's gonna work very well. Very well. <sighs> Hey guys. <laughs> it just didn't work very well. Yeah, it didn't work very well at all. Um, yeah, that was like that first sort of wave. There was like the X-Men movies. I guess you can look at like the third movie in like superhero franchises. Very, very rarely is better than the first two. I mean, there was Batman, Batman Returns, and then Batman Forever was... I remember it being great when I was a kid. Looked at it as an adult. It's a massive step down from the first two. 
Um, and then number four was even worse again. You had X-Men, X2, and then Last Stand. That was the one that kind of went a bit funky. You got Spider-Man 3. That's the one that kind of went a little bit funky. Uh, what about the MCU? Iron Man 3? Nah, I think 2 was the worst. Uh, Captain America 3 would be Civil War. Yeah, nah, that's fucking awesome. Thor 3 was Ragnarok. Come on, not even a contest. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. What, what what superhero movies do you think were the signs that the um, the franchise was starting to lose a bit of steam? Because we've had so many of them over the years at this point. But thank you for checking out the Spider-Man pitch meetings from the Raimi series with Tobey Maguire and everything like that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go check out my reactions to the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. I'd never seen those. I only watched them a couple of months ago. So that was a fun experience to be able to do a superhero movie reaction go check out both of those uh the first one's got a lot of down votes um i think i may be a little bit too critical of andrew garfield's peter parker in that i don't know peter mate that's a bit creepy so you're going there to eat fish via her bedroom window that's a good first impression there peter oh. yeah fuck you gwen stacy you're gonna lure me into this branzino trap he's a piece of this peter parker is shit i do not like him at all Go check it out and let me know in the comments. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.